Hello everybody and welcome to another video on uh, Ultimate Admiral Age of Say. So today we're going to take a look at one uh, an article about the naval gameplay. So uh, as you saw a few a couple of weeks ago I did a video on uh, the video that they had uploaded. So today we're going to uh, read the article. I uh, get some more details that I didn't cover in uh, that video that we couldn't see. So uh, First of the game is set between 1775 and 1815. I believe I've uh, mentioned that. So, uh, as to no one's surprise, they're wooden ships and they're using historical replicas. You can expect the uh, ships from uh, naval action, basically. As I said in the video, there were some uh, recognizable, like this is the frig frigate. That's the surprise, if I see it all right. That's the Agamemnon. A bit hard for me to see in this small picture, but you get the point. They're Maybe we'll see some that aren't in naval action, but we'll see. That's the pickle. That's the brig. That's the pickle. Pickle. You get my point. So uh, each ship has different characteristics, of course, uh, which uh, are uh, well, their navigational skills, combat ability, armor penetration, maneuvering in battle. Also mentions that. Uh, all ships carry weight, and the weight affects the number of upgrades, so the type of cannons, the crew sizes, so you, you can uh, customize your ship somewhat based on weight. And uh, each ship offers up to 5 upgrade slots and 4 gun decks, so 4 gun decks, that's the first rate basically. And uh, depending on your ships, there's a different amount of number of officers, and those will be, uh, are important, you need them to... Uh, command the vessel and you'll need them to uh, ca capture other vessels. So one is enough for the smallest vessels, but you will need up to six for uh, the larger ships. And there are three designations. You have warships, transports and mortar batteries. And uh, warships were all used to uh, like uh, yeah, surprise, victory, uh, dolls. They can do all the tasks basically, transportation and bombardment, but transports are of course best at it since they're dedicated to transporting infantry. And uh, mortar ships are of course highly effective against coastal fortifications, same idea as naval action except of course you don't have uh, the transport ships. But hey, uh, naval action doesn't really promote that, this here it's more useful. At least last I checked in naval action, I'll admit I haven't played naval, naval action in a long time. So, every ship has armor, wooden armor, of course, and, uh, yeah, penetration is a combination of base cannon penetration, effective ranges, so, it's basically the naval action damage model, I guess. So, concentrating fire on already damaged side on ship will increase Damage dealt. So basically, naval action damage model. Of course, I don't know if it'll be like naval action where if you lose one side, everything on one side, you'll start sinking. But yeah, we'll find out. Of course, maneuver each ship, different maneuver. First rate will be less maneuverable than uh, sixth rate, and depending on the, your mass, like this frigate with uh, two mass will be less maneuverable than one with three mass. Here, of course, uh, this is important. Officers, I'm not sure how the officer system works in naval action at the moment, but uh, yeah, ship is commanded by our officers, and both the quality uh, of the crew and, and the officers will affect the performance of the ships. And each officer has a set of skills and occupies a position where he will be put them to good use. And crews have their own skill levels, which will affect ship behavior. So. I'm guessing that better crew will be better in combat. Here, of course, you can also see uh, the weapons, sea service, 38, muskets, max, min crew, and OPT, I don't know, that. I'm guessing that's also optional. You have some officers here from Admiralty. Here's a better view on it. Efficiency, sailing, boarding, gunnery, morale, and stamina. 
So efficiency, overall performance, sailing, that's well, sailing, boarding, that's boarding on board marines as well as general boarding access, actions, gunnery, that's cannon actually and reloading speed, morale is morale, and stamina is stamina, straightforward. So, a ship's crew consists of both sailors and marines. The former are responsible for proper yada yada. And marines, we all know what marines do. They are also effective in land operations. Uh, the ship contains a number of squads equal to the number of officers aboard. And disembarking squad requires an officer to assume command of the detachment. So, if you have 10 officers, you have 10, uh, 10 uh, units, uh, squadrons of marines. And of course, you can conduct landing operations, and when you do that, uh, and the amount you're doing is maximum number of squads, which includes sailors, then then your ship won't be able to do uh, do uh, f any fighting because it has the minimal compl complement on board of the ship. But of course, the squads you send out, you can return them to the ship, so if necessary, they can fight it out. And uh, morale. Constantly shifting when the ship receives damage, loses an officer, all that. Your morale might lower, and eventually you might strike a colors and surrender, like this ship has done here. And then you need to send an officer with some men to uh, to uh, secure the ship. Sorry for that little cut in between. Uh, I was just idly clicking around and accidentally clicked on something uh, you guys shouldn't see. So. Uh, I don't think there is too much more for me to say. It, it, to me it looks good, so I guess we'll leave it at that. We'll see uh, what we'll get more of uh, in the future. I of course like the landing mechanics, the surrendering and the capturing is pretty cool. I would have loved to seen s some more on boarding since it says naval gameplay. I'm guessing you just press boarding and uh, it'll be like the Total War games.